Hi guys, welcome to uh, a bit of a LinkedIn workshop by uh, Jack Painter. Um, just trying to work out Vince's laptop, give me a second, that's word. Alright, so has everyone made a LinkedIn profile yet or know what it is? Yeah. Anyone not? Sweet, okay, good answer. Um, but does anyone know how, I guess, recruiters or companies actually find you on LinkedIn? No. Nope. All right, so I'll show that first, just so you can sort of understand how you need to sort of tie up your profile so it actually comes at the top of searches. So actually, the search bar operates in a Boolean. So if I'm looking for, I've got a JavaScript job that's working with React and Node.js, I would, I would search you know, JavaScript and React, Jesus, uh, and React and Node, or like Node, or Node.js, and if it's in London, you know, I'll probably put that in the filter as well, so I can just do that in the search bar. And then the way that this works is all of those terms that I put into that search bar, it's, uh, it's searching through the entirety of LinkedIn and every profile that has matched into that billion, it returns back. So the amount of times that you have keywords in your LinkedIn is important because the more times, the more the word pops up, not all the time, but typically, like I'd say 75% of the time, you will, you will go closer to the top of the search, you'll return quicker than the rest. So I'll get into it a bit in, term, in terms of like how you write your profile to get you know, the best possible outcomes. Um, so that's, again, that's just all linked into it. So I think you'd have f like five terms on the search bar. And then if you go for like a higher, if recruiters pay for like specialist LinkedIn profiles and get really in depth, they can be searched for like HTML and CSS or, you know, specific sort of um, project needs. So if it's, I'm trying to think, I mean, Agile's in most projects now, but you know, if they specifically need someone who's worked in multiple Agile environments, they search Agile and things like that. So making sure you, you mention any relevant data on your profile is important. Um, so I'm gonna go into my profile now. I've removed like quite a bit to dumb it down so you can sort of see what changes I'm gonna make to make my profile stand out. So first off, and this is useful for everyone because when you log into LinkedIn or make your LinkedIn profile, you should get it. You do get a profile strength uh, thing here, um, which basically will tell you, will rank you based on the amount of changes you've or information you put on your LinkedIn profile. So, for example, if you don't have like a, if you don't have a summary, which I don't have here, for example, then it will knock you down the ranking. Uh, the ranking's only them sort of trying to give pointers as to, you know, how likely you are to get more people to match with you or find you. Um, but that's not necessarily a barometer as to how recruiters will find you. It's all based on the keywords. Um, because again, that's that's the only way they can really search you out as such and come across your profile. Obviously after that, you've got to then make sure that your profile is then something they're interested in. Um, so, I mean, the first thing I do is on your experience, if you haven't really done this, I know it's a bit difficult and awkward to say, but you know, you're at Coderi at the moment, you can say student, sure, but if you say student, then you're you're not gonna pop up in any develop any job title searches. So if someone's looking for a, a JavaScript developer or a full stack developer, you won't pop up because you are a student. Um, so they will assume the search will assume that you're at university mm. or you're you're not you're not involved in the technology side of things. If you put skills in your profile, the skills will match, but if they're searching specifically for a job title, you will not pop up. So that's why it's important to make sure the job title matches something that will actually be searched. Um, then, you know, actually provide some details on it. And when I say details, you know, first and foremost, what I always suggest to developers is to think about the core technologies you're working with, because ultimately, Technology is the only way, again, that people will search. So what we're working with React, Node, uh, JavaScript, obviously. How do I forget that? Uh, HTML, CSS, they're the core cool ones. I mean, obviously, we'll learn about like databases and things like that. But if you're putting it on your LinkedIn profile, you need it to be something that you're comfortable enough talking about. 
if you put on their MongoDB after like, a couple of workshops and you've not really grasped it, and you go for an interview, like, even if, even a telephone interview, they're always going to look at your LinkedIn profile as a way to find out more about yourself. It's a profile about yourself professionally. So if you say something on there which they find interesting, like MondoDB, they ask you questions and you can't answer that, you potentially jeopardise your entire opportunity with the role. So don't put information on your profile that you're not comfortable speaking about in depth. Um, so I'll say that for the meantime. Um, I'm currently learning... CSS. And then. So, in this, if you ask your questions about MongoDB, like, what would I ask? Like, what, is there any projects about MongoDB? Or? Yeah, um, they, it's a question that I've actually asked and I've interviewed people as well. Is if someone says something which you're not entirely convinced they have the experience of, which is typically what you go for, if you see someone in a profile which you think, how have they got that experience? You go straight to that as your first point of call in terms of questioning. And you can just tell, if you say to someone, you know, where have you gained this experience? They give you, they, they maybe answer it, but they can't, they don't sound confident. And then you ask, how have they actually used it and implemented it? Mm. Then that's when it falls apart. And then the issue is you've set a precedent that, you know, what you've said in your profile is not entirely correct, mm. which again, just, just avoid it. There's no, don't put everything you've ever learned unless you really understand it, because you're just going to lose opportunities based on that. Um, so again, do that for all your experience. The other thing I would say about experience as well is I've just trimmed mine down this morning because I had like my jobs in like uh, 2014, things like that. You know, I don't know if I said this in any other way, but tech, IT recruiters aren't really going to care too much about what you were doing before. So I had more like loads of detail about what I was doing in my roles, but again, they're not really relevant. If I can think of anything. That is relevant, like I probably will with my last company because I was, you know, getting involved with meetups and things like that. You know, flesh it out in there. Anything that can be, you know, positively translated to a technical job or any company you're looking at joining, put it on there. Um, and again, be aware that keywords. So if you worked in an agile environment before, put agile on there because again, like it's a common term that people will search for. Um, and then I mentioned about the summary. So go here. So that's just. At the top of the page in your profile, you know, just under here, go to the edit button, <clears throat> make your headline. So I put developer, I changed that this morning just as an example. So you know, make sure it's something that would be useful in search, not just developer, because there's a million developers in the world. There's le probably less than a million full set developers or JavaScript developers. Uh, And then again, just make sure the current position's there. Probably don't need your postcode. That's run anyway. Um, and then also change your industry. That's really important. Make sure your industry is selected to information technologies and services. Because if you're put on a different uh, industry, it can push you to uh, the back of the searches as well. Um, people with tech and obviously have the same amount of you know, keywords you have when they search, they are going to pop up first. Um, and I'm not sure this is, a, like again, 100% in every case, because there are anomalies, but if you don't have that and you have everything else, you will literally pop up after every single person who has technology and services marked in their industries. So you could be number 9,500 out of 10,000, and mm -hmm. no one's going to go that far. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so you're just wasting your time with your LinkedIn profile at that point. Um, Save that. Um, it's a really useful one. So, as you can see at the top, my LinkedIn URL is not like the randomly generated one you get when you make your profile. Um, <clears throat> I've got a link to this, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So, you go to View Profile, which I'm actually already on. Here it is. And it's Edit Public Profile and URL. So, you go right to the top of your page, it's on the right hand side. Click on this. And then click on this, and you can change it to, you know, in theory, you should do your, your name. Um, I wouldn't mess around and put nicknames or anything on it, because ultimately, it's how people are going to search for you. So, unfortunately, mine, I had to it the other way around, because someone's already used that URL. But, you know, try and get it as close as possible to your name. Um, that's really important when you're networking at meetup events like tonight, because 
you know, yes, you can find someone by their name, but you know, my name's pretty common. So what I always say is, you know, if you actually want to find me, my URL is my surname, then my first name. It will pop up as the only profile. You can't not find me because there's going to be multiple Jack painters you do development. And if you're meeting someone for the first time after a short discussion and they can't find you after one go, they're not going to bother finding you. You've lost, it. You've lost that opportunity to network. You've wasted your time, basically. Um, back to LinkedIn. And then just going back into the store again. So put a background on it. Weirdly, it does affect the search positively. This all ties into this bit. Make sure you've got a photo. <laughs> I, t I can't believe I have to say this every time, but make sure it's professional. <laughs> You'd be surprised, even people who work in an industry using LinkedIn, they have unprofessional photos. And a first impression on your LinkedIn profile is ultimately the first impression they're going to have of you in most cases. So if you've got a trashy profile photo, they're going to have the opinion that you are a trashy person. So just make sure it's something respectable. Um, experience, and then I'll just, oh, what we're done. Scroll down, and then there's skills and endorsements. So this isn't something that it will prompt you to do when you make your profile, but it's really, really important. Um, especially if you've had a LinkedIn profile before, or you've got a LinkedIn profile where you put loads of information about your previous jobs, because this will automatically fill with experience that it feels is relevant to you. So I had what, originally six years of recruitment experience on my profile. I had loads of skills and endorsements from people relating into recruitment. Not relevant. Make sure you can delete it by doing this, and you can literally select the instills and endorsements you have on your profile, um, and either delete them like that, or obviously save it like that. Um, and in order to actually obviously add these, you do literally go to add a new still. It will have automatic prompts related into what <coughs> searches um, will will throw back. Again, these are really important because it all ties into the search. If you have stills and endorsements of React, and you've got React in your current role then that means you've got two hits straight away just on React, which is probably more than people who don't really know how to use LinkedIn properly. You'll, have, you'll probably have more hits than someone who's had one professional job in React. So I've got quite a few people who reach out because, unfortunately, recruitment is a numbers game, so they probably message 300 people, and they don't really have the time to read your profile. So because you pop up at the top, they assume that they're going to reach out to you for jobs. So... Well, I had one just a second ago. Yeah. Someone reached out to me for a 40 to 50K job just as I pop up at the top. So, you know, not everything you're going to get through on LinkedIn is going to be relevant, but the fact that you're getting people reach out to is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And making sure you keep your LinkedIn update as well beyond just your first job is massively important because you'll have, even if you're not looking, there's so many IT jobs out there because there's not enough people out there that you'll be reached out to for cool opportunities. Even if you don't think you're looking, if the right opportunity pops up, which it typically does on LinkedIn because you'll get every opportunity if you position your profile right, then it just gives you another option. Um, <clears throat> where are we? Where's the summary? Sorry, I'm trying to find this summary, which allows you to go a bit more in depth, again, break down your actual experience and what you're doing. Give me a second. Um, Christ. Not the right time to not remember how to put this somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's all updated. Uh, there it is, yeah. It's a summary, so again, just like, hey, Make, again, what I'd say is when you're writing your summary, before you write anything, think about the core technologies you work with. Again, because you need to make sure you mention all of those. So again, React, Node, JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS. And then if there's anything you're looking into, um, any technology you're interested in, again, put that on there. Um, Two reasons you want to you want to set that is if you just put the technology you're interested in as a technology you work at on your summary, they're going to assume you're working with it. You're going to be interviewed based on that. 
to just make sure that you know it's put in there as you know I'm, I'm interested in or I'm looking to get into I don't know Vue.js or something like that. Um, jobs or companies will put in their specifications for recruiters. You know their desired experience, or which would be you know a vested interest in Vue.js or you know doing some home lab work. Home lab refers to what you're doing in your own time outside of professional work um, in terms of upskilling. Um, so again, you know. If it was, and uh, currently, uh, spare time to that. So at this point, oh god, that's not right. Ignore that. Save. Um, so at this point, I now have junior full set developer. I could even call myself a junior. React developer, it depends on what angle you want to really force yourself down. If you're more interested in the front end side, go React or JavaScript. If, if it's full set, put full set. Um, so you've got React in your summary, so there's one hit. You've got React in your experience, that's two hits. And now you have React as a skills endorsement as well. Um, so that's three hits of React, um, which is, I mean, most junior developers might have it once. That's it. So you're, you're ahead of the curve in that respect. Um, in terms of endorsements as well, um, so I know Faraj added me on LinkedIn today, so I'll go to his profile. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but the endorsements, so when you go on someone else's profile, you can basically, it's, I guess it's a plus, so it would give like a point rating on their skills endorsement. So, I mean, like Faraj, not to single you out, but that's what I'm saying about the endorsements. It automatically come up with whatever skills endorsements it thinks based on your previous experience. So just go fill, filter it out, change it out. And then what I would say is, you know, I, I'd like to rule uh, friends. <laughs> um, but, you know, go, go on to, you know, other guys in the courses, LinkedIn profiles, give them endorsements on that. You know, again, all ties into the fact that you will pop up higher on the search if you do endorse yourself. And not endorse yourself, endorse others. Um... And then the other thing is, and this is something I've never done before because I've not had a portfolio or anything to link, but you can link your website on here. And I've got an article for this. I only found out about it today. Where is it? It's not there. There it is. Um, so I don't know. You can put your GitHub, for example, or your portfolio, and it's ready to go. So I don't know. Uh, Jack. And so to that, my portfolio up. So. Portfolio. Uh, and does it work? Personal. For sake. <laughs> Dot com. So that will then pop up there. So if they want to reach out to you, they've got another link there. Again, make sure you have all your details on there. Um, phone number, I think, when you're in a job. <laughs> Um, remove it because you don't want recruiters reaching out to you directly if you're happy in a job. Also, unlike myself, make sure your phone number is correct <laughs> because that's not my number. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, pr probably, probably a good thing. Um, but with the website piece, so if you want to change this, so it will say like portfolio. Now, I don't know how to do this, I didn't find that today, but I've got an article that I'll link on Slack, but you can actually edit this. I'd like to show it, but I just don't think. No, I'm not going to ask to do it, to be honest. Um, but you can change that so it's nice and easy. People don't really need to guess. If your portfolio link is like, uh, I don't know, it's on Heroku, it's not going to say portfolio. It's not going to be easy for them to know what it is. So you can change that. Again, I have the link for that. I'll change that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where else are we? Um, Recommendations, so I'm not sure whether or not I would put this on for other guys in the boot camp, but when you are in roles um, and you know you end up, you, you and another member of the team get along or you know that they respect your work, always, 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 always get them to give you recommendations. Recommendations are literally referrals without having to be asked for. They can go on your LinkedIn and they can see someone else has given you a positive review. Um, if uh, a couple of things, so if they are technical, their job titles 
like if they have a job title of full stack developer, that will also go into your search result. So getting other developers to recommend you who have relevant uh, job types yourself will again really really boost your um, your chances of being higher up on the search list. Uh, in terms of like myself, uh, I think that when I was in recruitment, I was top 200. I was in the first 200 of any recruited globally. So, and that's that's not because I had loads of jobs and I don't for 20 years. It's just that any opportunity I saw to put any skill set that is being searched for, again, it all ties into this this search bar, then that's the pop at the top. So, again, just always keep in mind that it doesn't matter how great you describe yourself on your LinkedIn profile, if you don't put the keywords or or think about how they're going to search your profile, then you want then no one's going to see it. So just make sure that again, you know, you, you, you're putting as, embellishing as much detail as you can, but making sure you mention all the buzzwords as such. Um, and then finally, what I would say is the interest. So again, I'm not sure how this is going to look from my side. So I'm not updating ages, but interests. Now, I don't understand the algorithm for interests, but if someone's looking at your LinkedIn profile and your interests, you don't have any interests, or your interest is like, I don't know, just, I don't know why I've got James Khan. I don't even like James Khan. But if your interests aren't relevant to what you're trying to get into, it doesn't look good. Try and, try and think about companies that you find cool, anything relevant. And I would also say, it, when you're interviewing, specifically target companies or interests sorry that will interest or be relevant to the companies you're, you're trying to interview for um, again just it means it's common ground um, outside of that I'm not sure there's too much more that I can really go over um, make sure profiles there Settings. Fair to say, really. yes, any yeah Sorry, I was gonna say any any questions so far? Yeah. Okay. The employment section, yeah? Yeah. So the the rule of thumb that I've always been taught and to be honest, I, I definitely believe in is e any experience from five years onwards just get rid of it because it's not it's just not relevant even even things in the last five years isn't relevant but if you don't put the experience on there then they're, they, they're going to show you're probably younger than you are um, which I'm not saying that companies or recruiters will discriminate by age but I'm not but I am saying that uh, they probably won't reach out to someone who's only had a year's experience because they assume that they're probably fresh out of school or whatever. So make sure that you have some experience, and that it shows that you know you can work professionally. You know what it's like to be a professional. Um, again, I wouldn't go like massively in detail. So I had like on this one, I had it was ridiculous. It was like an entire page just the details about like the company, what I was doing, what their beliefs are, and their their, their mantra. It was just like waffle, basically, and. All you're doing is distracting them from looking further down at your skills endorsements and you know your recommendations, the more interesting bits. Um, I'm not sh I'm pretty confident in saying you can't move the recommendations and endorsements up, so it's cl close to the top of what they ultimately land on. Um, but again, you know, don't just don't put waffle on there unnecessarily, basically, um, because it's not relevant. <laughs> And I'd say that on your portfolio as well, with the portfolio. Um, the About Me page, I know that, and like even some of the best guys I've ever spoken to in terms of te technical knowledge, they just can't position their portfolio as well. Um, so on the About Me, you know, nice two, three lines at the top, just saying, you know, who you are, um, what your background was before briefly, um, and then mentioning your core tech and you know what you're looking to get into and then I'd say really that's it maybe finish off with a couple of interests again common ground with an interviewer if you watch Formula One and the interviewer likes Formula One to be honest like if you get along with an interviewer typically they, they can uh, blindside some uh, 
some mishaps or you know lack of experience ultimately if you're interviewing someone they're probably the one who decides they hire you so if they like you and they like you to the point where they want to I guess what's the way I want to word this um, if, they, if they like you and they can see the potential then they're, they'll look past you know some gaps in your knowledge people who uh, a lot of the best developers um, probably aren't the best socially um, and even though they can completely smash tech tests, I've had developers who literally, I get the feedback from the interviewer and I read the first bit and I'm like, oh my God, he's done fantastic, he's got the job. And then I go down and they're just like, he's not the right culture fit. Culture fit is honestly 50% of the battle because if you can't fit in in a team and pretty much every company in the UK, except maybe a couple of banks, because they're slow, work in an agile environment. And as we know of agile, you know, you're going to do stand-ups every day. Yeah. You need to be able to communicate with your team about what you're doing. They don't need to. They don't, to, they don't want to go away from those meetings, the business guys, and not know ultimately what you're trying to tell them because you couldn't communicate properly. Mm-hmm. And if you can't get along with your team, you know, it, it does affect. It is a relate. It is a professional relationship. If you can't get along with your team, then you're just not going to work in a long term. Mm-hmm. Um, and people are less likely to help you as well. So. Again, just like make make sure that you're um <coughs> you're, you're you're easy to work with. Nice yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Ah, oh, so sad. Um, for instance, I have a profile on LinkedIn which is target to other industries. Mm-hmm. Do you like what? Feel, what? Like you got one. In my case, yeah. Sound engineering. Ah. So, would you suggest in that case to just have one profile on LinkedIn? Would it be because I was thinking, or I can have one profile that talks about a lot of things, which is confusing. Like, mm. Yeah. Developer slash sound engineering is like, yeah, that's like uh, that's really strange. So that just I guess sort of goes into what I was saying about uh, the experience piece, because obviously we've all, well, not all of us, most of us. I know like Kate and Kelly have had a technical background before, but most of us don't have really any relevant experience prior to the boot camp. So in example, your profile. So like. Uh, Obviously, my profile. So I've only ever had one profile, and I would suggest to only ever have one profile. You don't want to sort of convolute, you know, how it is for someone to find you on LinkedIn. If you have two profiles and they click on your sound engineer first, your sound engineer profile first, and you've met them at meetup, they're going to be like, "Oh, something's off here." So what I would say is, look, don't remove all your past because ultimately, you know, it is interesting to see that you come from a sound engineer background, but. Your experience is opportunity to do that because you want to make sure that your LinkedIn profile, when they go on it, it doesn't say sound engineer or something like that where they can have any chance of getting the wrong impression. Um, so make sure the top of it is clear that because you're gonna you, you want to be into technical development, right? You don't want to be a sound engineer anymore. Well, that's the thing. Uh, from what you're saying, is that ideally, or to make LinkedIn work. You have to choose one thing, right? In terms of like where you should be targeting like your profile. So when you're making your profile, think about it from the end of where people will be looking for you for. If the sound engineering information is useful for them to know about you, um, but it's not how they are going to be searching for you, if that makes sense. So make sure the information is there because it's good that they can know about your background and whatnot on your experience. But make sure that it's not affecting the search. So if you have... so I. Again, I'm pretty sure this is correct to me saying, but if I had that slash sound engineer, I can't spell the word sound engineer, then actually that will, in most cases, break the search for job titles. Because typically what will happen is they will search by, let's say nice and simple, JavaScript developer or JavaScript. So this is how I would do it if I was trying to find someone for my job. So that, so it covers both faces in case you've got that, or maybe front end developer or front 
and change this developer and JavaScript because again the job type was one thing but there still is another thing so you separate it and HTML. If you have sound engineer on that job type over the slash you won't pop up on that search because it's not matching to all of these titles here. So just just make sure the information on that is separate. Hmm. But the other thing was that, for instance, I was thinking, okay, I'm interested in both fields, mm. but imagine if I'm, I don't know, I meet you in a meetup and then say, yeah, I like this person. So you search me on LinkedIn mm. and you see two profiles yeah. with the same face. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. One says it's like, it's not good. Yeah, and it, and I will say this, there are a lot of people, because the IT industry is obviously a very lucrative one, um, and a lot of jobs out there, you can, a lot of people can pretty much blad their way into it. If there's not a technical test, and you know how to talk the talk, you can, some people can get into jobs that way. And I've had people who tell me they are developers, they're like, uh, like Salesforce developers, and then I go on LinkedIn, because I found this even on the job boards, I go on LinkedIn, I search in a name, and I search in, I just search in a name and try and find them. And I find two profiles. I find one where they say they're a business analyst in the same job as where they said to me they were a developer on SCV. So they've lied. So you re that's why I say make sure it's one profile. Don't, basically, don't cause any thought or doubt to a recruiter or company looking to hire you. Because if you do, you run the risk that they don't reach out to you or you know, they have a bad opinion of you, or not a bad opinion, but they have a they have a thought in the back of their head, like, oh, why is this going to two profiles? Um, so what I would say is, again, just make sure it's targeted. If you're looking to get into a technical development job, make sure the focus of your profile is on technical development. On your summary, you know, instead of just saying, you know, I'm, I've got an interest in learning Vue.js, just say, I've got, still hold a really strong interest in sound engineering, it's a passion. Uh, of mine I used to do as a job, um, but now I'm looking to break into the development space, something like that. So then it's still true to what you obviously want to say about your past, keep it relevant. You'll still pop up in those searches as well, but you know, ultimately your focus is on popping up to development jobs. You'll still do that whilst still filling that need that you want with the sound engineering. Okay. Any, anybody else? You in the back. <laughs> well, well, I've noticed that LinkedIn has um, posting posts. Yeah, I was, I was going to get on to that. Um, so, I mean, first off, I touched on it a bit earlier about the URL. When you're going to meetups, every person you have, a, you have a conversation with, which you get along with, make sure you finish that conversation by asking them if they're on LinkedIn, and if they are, what their name is, their full name. Don't ask your first name because you won't find them. Mm -hmm. um, have your phone ready. Have your phone, yeah, have your phone ready. So when I went to the Time to React meetup, and I've done this forever, I don't go on LinkedIn. I'll just have my notes app on my phone open, and I'll just ask them what their name is, mm -hmm. where who, what their job is, what company, and I can find them on LinkedIn 100% later. And then I'll go on LinkedIn, let's say, what was the guy, Fabio, was it? Yeah. yeah. So Fabio chat. I already had him as, as a connection before because you can laugh. I actually reached out to him two years ago about a job. He's blanked me, but <laughs> dropped him a message. Make sure it's relevant. Don't just say, "Oh yeah, um, please add me on LinkedIn," which is the generic me message because you've met this person and you want to make sure that they go on LinkedIn and I don't just see a generic response because they're used to it. Because they have so many people reach out to them for jobs that they just they just ignore messages that they don't recognise from people. So make sure the message is, again, it's short and sweet, you can't do more than that. But, you know, say, for example, like, I had a great talk yesterday, um, other than and then try and make a conversation from there. Build the relationship, not just at the meetup, the initial meeting, but make sure you can maybe meet them again in the future, know what other meetups they're going to. If they're going to another meetup and you meet up with them and they're going with others, you just network with like four or five new people. Mm -hmm. um, and then going on to the post thing, so I'm really bad with social media uh, in terms of like posting things or professional social media because this is not the same as Twitter. I use Twitter a lot, 
this is different. I don't post a lot on LinkedIn because I don't have the ability or the written ability really or the relevant topics for what I'm trying to get into or knowledge of the relevant topics that I'm trying to get into to actually do so. Um, so if you come across an article you think is really interesting, so for example, React Hoots is something we're learning now, but that's really new and it is a big talking point in the space. So if you come across a really interesting article about a new hook that's being introduced or a new update coming through, make a post, link that article, which you can do, you just literally drop the URL and it'll pop up, it'll generate the URL. Um, put, put a short thought on like, oh yeah, um, you know, really interesting read here, um, looking forward to seeing where we're at with you in the future, and then ask a question to your network that you're building out, make a discussion. Again, it all just goes into sort of reinforcing these, these connections you've got. Um, and the other thing is, don't just use LinkedIn for a way to add people you're meeting. Ultimately, it's a way for you to network with people you've never met. Um, so again, the same way that I've done with the search for a developer, you can you guys can do that. So think about it like this. So who's going to hire developers in their team? Who, who hires developers? Not the company, but who in the company? What titles do they have? HR. Human hey, hey, resource. Human resources board, I'd say like, think about it being relevant to the team. So a big company has a thousand people. Their HR teams manage the HR processes. You can't 100% guarantee that you're hitting the person who deals with recruitment. So what I'd say is maybe think of, you know, a lead developer. Easy. Like, you know that that guy is interested in developers because he leads a team of developers. If he has someone who leaves his team and you message him, or you've messaged him before, then he can reach out to you like that. So, again, I've not done it too much, but if I was looking to connect people who, I think it was industry, that's quite cool. I don't know, I like sports. Uh, lead, so you do lead, developer, wrap it in quotes, it makes that job title all one. If you have it as separate words, then it will search for lead and developer at the same time, so you'll have every lead under the sun coming through your search, you won't get the target search you want, so put it in quotes, you're searching for it. Um, then, and what tech, yeah, what tech do you have that is going to be relevant if they reach out to you, or if you try to reach out to them, uh, and think about, obviously it's not the industry, the space you want to get into is IT, but what companies do you have a sort of crossover in your interests or previous experience from? So, Farage came from a retail background. Mor Morrison's, Sainsbury's, all these companies have huge, huge IT hubs. Sainsbury's have, I think it's a 300 person office, just for an IT team in Holborn. Um, so, make it relevant. Like, boom. Please work. There you go. All of these guys have either worked or working in retail companies. So, that Mads, Overson. This guy's a lead developer at All Saints. All Saints, big retail company. Uh, does he have JavaScript? That's not very useful. He doesn't have JavaScript. No. <laughs> um, lead developer and JavaScript. Um, I haven't filtered by location, sorry. So put in London, obviously, on your search as well. But this guy's a lead developer at Next. He's been there for 10 years, um, which means he's probably permanent. Contracts is probably, in mo I'd say in like most cases, don't hire. It'd be permanent guys who are at the company who hire. So contractors there are there for, in theory, they should only be there for two years max before uh, their uh, their tax band changes significantly, which probably forces most people out of the job. So, you know, if someone's been at the company for a long time and they're a lead, they will have probably the deciding uh, factor on who they hire or not. Um, and then... Once you start building out your LinkedIn, you know, your homepage is going to have posts from other people um, or 
lots of people have their work anniversaries, but that's probably because they've got so many connections. Um, but if someone drops an article or something that you can add value to, or at least you know start a conversation on, drop a comment on it, drop your thought, and then again, it's an opportunity for you to network with someone. So basically, any opportunity you can to network, do it. And obviously, LinkedIn as a tool is it is a networking tool for professionals. It's the same as your Facebook and Twitter, but only for the work side of life. Uh, Any more questions before we end it? Kieran? That's yeah. it. Okay. All right, one more time. Very insightful.